Hey, what's up guys? We're back with another leak code video. Today we're gonna to be doing problem number 1567, maximum length of subarray with positive product. <coughs> what the hell was that? Given an array of integers and nums, find the maximum length of a subarray where the product of all of its elements are is positive. A subarray of an array is a consecutive sequence of zero or more values taken out of that array, which are in the maximum length of a subarray with positive product. Okay. So we have this nums array in one, negative two, negative three, and then four. That is four. The array nums already has a positive product of 24. Yes. Okay. So the longest sequence is four. One, two, three, four. That's how we get four. We have zero, one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Well, the longest sequence, not the longest positive sequence is uh, five, right? But if you multiply them all together, you would end up with zero because the zero is included. So the longest uh, positive one would be one, negative two, negative three, which are the product of six. Notice that we cannot include zero in the subway since that'll make the product zero, which is not positive. Okay, so the first thing to notice is that right there. Number one, every time we see a zero, we have to stop, okay? What do I mean by we have to stop? So let's say we're, we're just adding in numbers, okay? We're adding in one, then we add in negative two, then we add in negative three, and we add in four, and we just keep multiplying the products like this. We have one, then we do one times negative two, which is negative two, then that times negative three, negative two times negative three is negative of s positive six, then we do six times the next one, which is four, and six times four is 24, and then we just, we keep multiplying like that, right? But, Let's say we hit a zero. Let's say we had negative one, neg negative two, negative three, four, zero, five, six, right? So we know up to here we get 24, right, from here. And then, sorry, up to here. And then, then we keep multiplying again. We wanna multiply zero now. Well, why don't we multiply any number by zero? It's a zero. So then we end up with zero, 24 times zero, zero. Then we do zero times five, zero. Six times uh, zero, zero. And it keeps being zero, 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 and after, again and again. So one thing we need to keep in mind is now when we hit a zero, it's a special case. And that basically means now, well, we can't keep multiplying our numbers again. So let's push our starting index for the starting of the array from right here and start multiplying onwards from there. Okay. So we're going to divide each of these arrays into their own sections of zeros. Okay. We're going to divide them by zero. Okay. So now either this is an answer or this has the answer, okay? Not this is the answer, sorry. Either this side has the an answer, the answer, or this side has the answer, okay? So, now that we know that, and we know one of these sides has to have an answer, and every time we hit a zero, we have to start another array, or another subarray, right? We have to start another subarray. Now, that's the first uh, observation. The second observation is that we have negative numbers, right? So, when will a neg when do negative numbers become positive? Well, when they, when two when an even number of negative num numbers are multiplied by each other, they'll end up with a positive answer. When an odd number of negative numbers are multiplied by each other, well, we'll have an odd answer. So, just notice, just remember, basic math that an even number, uh, the product of an even number of negative numbers, whatever, is even, and if it's an odd number of negative numbers, then it's odd, whatever, I'm lagging, okay. So, we can keep adding, right? So we have one, then we have negative two, then we have negative three, so at negative two, our number is not positive anymore. So it's just what? It's negative two. Then we have negative three, it becomes positive, turns into six, then six times four is 24. So let's walk through that example. So we have one, negative two, negative three, and four, okay? Now, we're gonna keep multiplying the number out to our full product. So we have like our product, whatever you wanna call it, and we just keep multiplying in. Just imagine that, right? So our product becomes one first, then we multiply by what? Negative two. Okay, 
What's the answer to that? That is negative 2, right? That's negative 2. So now, let's take a step back. I missed a step. So a first step, we start with a 1 as our product. Whatever you want to start with, it doesn't matter. Well, you have to start with 1. And then you multiply by the first number, which is 1. So you're going to multiply by 1. Okay, and we're going to end up with 1, right? So now we know the, the maximum positive product is already what? 1. Okay, we had 0, right? So our answer was 0 originally. Well, now we see we got a size of 1, a size of subarray of 1, so we, that, that becomes 1. Then we go to the next step. So then we do what? We're going to take that 1, and we're going to multiply by the next number, which is negative 2. So we're going to take it, multiply by negative 2, and that's going to give us what? Negative 2. But is that the positive? No. So we can't change our answer, right? So we're going to go again. We're going to take that negative 2. We're going to apply by the next number, which is negative 3. And what is that? That's what? 6. Is that positive now? Yes. So we know the index that negative 3 is at, right? And we know when we started, right? Which is at, in this case, 0. We know where we started this subarray from. Right? Imagine we're working at a subarray right now and we just subtract the indices and we see that we have a size of subarray of 3 and that's our new maximum, right? We got that. Well, keep going. Okay, let's just keep going now. So now we see a 4. We're going to do the 4. I mean, sorry, we're going to take out what we had previously. We're going to multiply by 4 and we end up with 24. That's already positive again. So once again, we're going to get our new uh, length and that's going to be our answer. And then we hit the end of the array, and then we see that's, that's 4, and that's our final answer. But now let's say we had this example up there where we had 4, and then 0, and then 5, and then 6. All right? So now we need to keep going. We want to check more. But now, so now I'm going to take the 24, and I'm going to multiply by the next one, which is 24 times what? 0. But remember, when we hit 0, we have to start another subarray. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to imagine that this is gone. All this is gone. And I have my maximum is 4 already. And I'm going to start a new product. I'm going to start again from 1. Okay. And I'm going to skip the 0 because we had a 0 and I'm going to start from 5. So 1 times 5. So now what we're really doing is we're just working at an array of 5, 6 basically, right? You won't really know when it ends, when this subarray ends. But you'll know when it ends when you hit a 0 or you hit the end of the um, full array. But we don't really know that right now. But just, just to show you, we are working on an array of 5, 6 right now. So what's that? 5, and then we're going to do it again 5 times the next one, which is 6. That'll give us 30, right? And then we, we update our size. Is it, it, the size of this is 2. Is that greater than 4? No. So we just keep that and we keep going. So that's how it's going to work. We're going to have uh, subarrays of different sizes, and we're going to keep working off of that. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, that's the basic gist of it. Every time we hit a zero, we have to start a new subarray, okay? And we have to keep track of how many times we saw an odd number, uh, uh, how many times we saw a negative number, whether we saw it an odd number of times or whether we saw it an even number of times. And based on that, we can kind of uh, build the answer. Because we know if we saw an odd number of um, negative numbers, then we can't um, increase our maximum size, right? Because the final answer would be odd. I mean, it will be a negative number. But if we saw an even number of negative numbers, then we know our final answer will end up being positive. Okay. But now let's say the example was like this. So we had 1, negative 2, negative 3, and then we had negative 5, and then neg uh, 4, like that. Okay? Remember, don't worry about the zeros anymore. We explain the zeros. The zeros just mean you have new subarrays. Okay. So we have to answer, answer, handle this case now. Because you see now we have an odd number of negative numbers. <clears throat> so now, our product, one, whatever, it's now one, then we're gonna keep doing that. We're gonna say one times what? Times the first one, which is one, which is one, then we do it again, and we, we make our answer is one, right? It was originally zero, it was zero, then we made it one. Then we go to negative two, so one times negative two, is a negative number, right? And we don't keep that in, in, into account. And then we have, um, at, oh yeah, so negative two times negative three, six, we see what's positive. Once again, we could update this now. We got a array of size three, a subarray of size three. 
Take negative 6, multiply by what? Negative 5. Um, sorry, positive 6 multiplied by negative 5. We end up with uh, negative 30. Okay, that is um, negative. So we can't update. So we do negative 30 times 4. We see what? Negative 120. And that's still negative. We can't update. We hit the end. So once we hit a zero, or once we hit the end, remember, when we hit a zero, that basically means we hit the end, right? When we hit a zero, that basically means we hit the end. So once we hit the end of our subarray, then we need to check. So now we have an odd, if we have an odd number of um, uh, negative numbers, well, now we need to see. We want to get an even number of negative numbers, right? We don't want an odd number of neg the num uh, negative numbers, so we'll remove the first negative number that we encountered. And because as we're going through, we're gonna keep track of when was that first negative number, and we'll start at uh, one after that, and we'll find the length of that subarray, right? So we'll say, we say we saw our first negative um, number was at uh, index of one, right here, right? The second number, which is index of one. And so we know that after that, if we remove the one negative number, we'll have an even number of negative numbers, and so we're good. So then I'll take the subarray of this size and I'll see it's a size three. Is that greater than my maximum or is it not greater than my maximum? And from there we can work on and build and um, basically get the answer. So what we're doing it once again, we're splitting the, the arrays into subarrays. What's the, what are the subarrays? Well, subarrays of, uh, uh, we're splitting it at zeros. We're splitting it at each zero, at the zeros, right? So over here, let's say this example. So this will split into this subarray and then this subarray because the zero in between we split it. Then once we split it, we're gonna we're gonna go through, okay, and we're gonna keep track of how many times we saw a negative number. Okay. If okay, if we see uh, by at any time we see um what am I saying? Oh yeah. So by the end of this subarray, if we saw an even number of negative numbers, right, then we're good. We, could, we know this is a possible, this is our maximum uh, length we could get. And we'll just take the length of that subarray. If we saw an odd, ne odd number of, of um, uh, negative numbers, if we saw an odd number of negative numbers, well, to make it even, we can either remove the first negative number we saw or the last negative number we saw. We don't need to remove the last negative number we saw, right? Because we already calculated as we were going through right? The length of the maximum subarray before we hit that last negative number, right? Before we got to that last negative number, right? Before we got to this negative five, we already calculated what could be our maximum subarray from here, right? At this point. Okay. This one. So all we need to do is now try to remove the first negative number we saw. So we get an even number of negative numbers and then see what the length of that is. Okay. So that's the basic gist of it. And we'll do that for each little subarray. Remember we're splitting at zeros and we'll keep track of our maximum length at each point and we'll get the solution by the end of that. Um, so see the code in one second. What's happening here is you have this for loop, okay? And um, you're going through it. You keep track of the first time you saw a negative number like we mentioned. You keep track of every time we see a zero position. The sum, it doesn't really mean sum. It means like, um, the, it's confusing the name over here. It's not really sum, it's the, um, basically, the sum of the number of times we saw a negative number, right? Whether it's in even times or odd times. What I did was I just made a Boolean uh, variable and I just kept flipping it, right? Every time we saw, I, I said it, it was basically is even and it was set to true. And then every time we saw a negative number, I would flip it. So, because then it would be one and then I set it to false, so it's not even. That's what I did. Anyways, so remember now. Every time we see a negative number, we want to um, basically flip it, or you can add it add to uh, the number of times we saw. But basically now, um, so we saw a negative number, so then our negative num number of negative numbers becomes one, so it becomes odd, so then two, then three. You'll see why that matters anyways, in a bit. Then we keep track of the first time we saw a negative number, right, in this subarray, and how do we know it's from a new subarray? Well, first negative is set to one. Because you'll see now in the next step, anytime we see a zero, we'll, we'll reset everything. We'll reset the number of times we saw a negative number. We'll reset the first time we saw a negative number, the, the position of the first negative number. We'll reset the zeroth position, right, which is at i, okay? 
So that's that. Every time we see a, a zero, that's what we mentioned. Every time we see a negative number, we have to keep track of the number of times we saw a negative number. It's a little confusing. It's like a word, like a tongue twister. And every time, any, any other time, so let's say we don't see a zero, we see a positive or we see a negative number, it doesn't really matter in this case because we're keeping track of how many times we saw a negative number in the uh, right here. So if we saw um, an even number of negative numbers, then we're good. We just take the, our current position minus the beginning of the subarray, right? So the size of our current subarray or the maximum we already previously found and we check what's the new maximum and we set it to that. Else, if we're at an odd number of negative numbers, if we're at, just keep in mind, if we're at an odd number of negative numbers, then we need to remove the first negative number. Remember, we were keeping track of it. So we do I minus the first negative and then the maximum, and then we have that and so forth. Um, it's pretty easy. Um, this isn't that hard of a problem. The explanation was probably a little long, but once again, my goal with these is to try to help you guys understand how to get to the problem, not just the explanation of the problem, but how to get to the problem. And that's why I don't code out the answers or what, anything like that. 